Established in 1958, Gihok Distilleries is the oldest distillery in West Africa. It is the sole surviving company from the Gihok Group of Industrial Manufacturing Companies set up by Ghana's first president. Located in the North Industrial Area of Ghana's capital, Accra, it has been manufacturing alcoholic beverage brands like Castle Bridge, Herba Freak, Mandingo Bitters, Takai for over 50 years. Over the years, its fortunes began to dwindle like many state-owned enterprises before it. A decision had to be taken about its future. It was a company that was profitable, but it did have some major challenges at the time. And what was also very clear was that since the factory was constructed, no major expansion or rehabilitation had happened. And so they were really running with equipment that was quite obsolete. Now, the policy direction was to make sure that to the extent that this was not a business that had been placed on divestiture, then it had to be run as a profitable concern. And so the challenge for the ministry was to see how best we could make that happen. A decision was made to look for um, an able leader, somebody who can have what we call a corporate turnaround. So uh, K. Simmons was brought on board in 2010, under the direction and leadership of a new board and management, Gihok began to chart a new course. Gihok was, I think, the last of the many, many industries or factories that the late Dr. Kwame Nkrumah set up. They had all been divested and we're not seeing anything. So we said no. At least this one must survive. We are going to prove to government that state-owned enterprises can be run profitably. And that was the mandate we gave ourselves and the vision that we gave ourselves. It quickly became evident that various production issues needed to be tackled. My first impression was a very old, rundown factory, um, extremely dusty. There's a large, you know, factory wall, perimeter wall, dirty, no branding, a lost opportunity. In terms of a corporate image, Gihok then didn't have it. The factory floor, there were so many people working there, um, very noisy, and there was kind of stench, you wonder what was the stench, but I got to find out it was the drains right inside the factory floor and also um, at the time they were using cook starch for us labeling glue and so they might cook it for about a week and then obviously it starts smelling so that was being used. I went to the bottle, bottle sorting area, it was really too small, it was a shed and most of the bottles were out and so people were working out, you know, and not under the shed but out because the, the place was too small. And in terms of GMP, that's, you know, good manufacturing practice, really we didn't have it at all. Um, there were broken bottles everywhere and there were about 80 plus people, men, mainly women and men, washing bottles by hand. And it was just laborious. But the one challenge that brought the greatest change emerged four months into the managing director's time at Gihok. I came in April and around June, July, there was, uh, you know, it started raining. And because the factory floor, the yard, the floor was the same, was lower than the street level. So water, it just flooded. And so you have muddy, 
flood, you know, water coming in, the whole place was flooded. I think about, came up to about two feet. And then it went into the factory and equipments like compressors, pumps on the floor, were all, you know, filled with water and so on. Mm -hmm. and, and so immediately you realize that it wasn't just a question of coming to just, you know, refurbish, paint and so on the factory, but it was more than that, especially when I was told that this happens every year. The scene was set and the turnaround then began. He met the management and within the shortest possible time, they came up with a five-year strategic plan. quite uh, a mammoth task and the project was done in phases. So the main factory, I'll, I call it phase one and two, was about 2,400 square meters. We first have to raise the foundation way above, slightly above the street level. We brought in panels, um, insulated panels from Dubai and once that was done, the metal framework with the insulation panels just went on. And um, really within four months, the factory was built. In the meantime, with the EDIF 5 million, we've managed to start purchasing some of our machinery and so on. And so once the factory was built and we had the tiling and so on, we started installing new or retooling some of the old machines to increase their capacity. Gihok Distilleries has always had the potential. In, in, in other words, it, it was always profitable, but the, it had so much more potential to do so much better. And that was what we, we, we set out to do. We took over in 2010. The, next, the very first financials were from 29. So there, there was a total sales of about 18.5 million Ghana cities. And as at when we were leaving the board, that's in 2012, we had made sales of about 35.8 million, which is about 94% plus. I'm reliably informed that as of the management accounts of 2015, the sales have exceeded 61 million. So that gives you a total sales of over 240%. The financing was done in two forms. We went for an EDIF facility. Uh, I think in total we went for about 17 uh, million, of which uh, I think in excess of 11 point something has been paid back, and the company is on course in paying back the remaining. They are very much on track. Georg approached us through its bankers, Assess Bank, for a facility to finance some expansion projects at the site. If we had the mandate to support industrial development. Again, if you look at Gehok, they have been trying to export. That again falls within our mandate because part of our mandate is to promote the ending of forex for the country. They performed the role of an import substitution company. We have a taste for foreign drinks, but locally if we produce and produce quality, people will change their taste and come in for our local drinks. So they also perform the function of an import substitution company that would reduce the flight of Forex outside the country and again would help stabilize the fund. So in 2011, we approved an amount of 5 million Ghana cities to them. In 2012, an amount of 8.5 million was also offered to them. And then in 2013, through another bank, NIB, 
we gave them about 3.7 million Ghana cities. So in total, we've done about 17.2 million Ghana cities. The new board has continued to implement the phases of the strategic plan, and the shareholders are very pleased with the performance and trajectory of GEHOC. The phase one of the project has started when we took over, and we have come to, to know whether phase two, three, and now we are going the fourth phase, right? So percentage-wise, I am saying that at least 80% of what we wanted to do has been achieved. That given the trend and looking at what is on site now, what, is, what we, you are seeing today, it means that uh, the projection has, uh, has come to fruition. Le the money that we have borrowed, we have used it judiciously, and I think it will pay off in the future. Um, there's been a very marked improvement um, with what Geo Distilleries has been doing. Obviously, for the shareholder, dividends are core and key. And uh, Gihok uh, Distilleries has paid uh, dividends over the period to the tune of 1,030,000 um, CDs to the government of Ghana. Uh, Gihok has paid about 4.75 million uh, CDs in taxes to the government of Ghana. Uh, in terms of excise duty alone, they have paid about 40 million CDs, and that is very significant. <laughs> On June 23, 2016, President John Dramani Mahama commissioned the new factory and was taken around to tour the new Gihok. Undoubtedly, the leadership that has persevered to bring about this turnaround cannot be denied. It's available right here in Ghana. The question is, do we dare to find it, nurture it, and protect it? Madame has tried a lot because when he, she came here, we don't have a lot of this. We, we are in a, in a financial problem, but now she has tried. She has tried. Now things are moving on. We have new machines, new uh, factory floor, and everything. Even now, we drink water free without buying it, see. And so, and then also, they ask for the paid, yeah. And then gradually, it will go better. It's better than the previous years that we were here. She have tried. She have tried. Even men have come here. We, before she came, we have MD, who is a, 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 a man. But Madame have tried, mother. From where I sit, uh, one of the things that I have identified as the major driver in anything is leadership. Um, we say leadership is cause, everything else is effect. And it's been demonstrated in almost all organizations throughout the world that for you to have any serious change anywhere, leadership is the most important factor. And so for me, the magic in Gihog is simply KC Mons. We should all be proud that a new Gihog has emerged. And I believe that uh, going forward, in the near future, tremendous things will happen. We will be proud to say that this is a made in Ghana in, uh, uh, industry. Gihog is poised to take the future to bring new and established brands to a greater market. As they say, watch this space. Mm -hmm.